Good morning. Uh, again, I'm Rick Flynn, the director of the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. On behalf of Governor Wolf, uh, for the, especially for those from out of state, welcome to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You know, uh, both Ray and Alvin uh, talked about the, the, the issue of the hazards, and, and, and this is actually a very significant issue that we've been working on. I'll talk a little bit about that. But I'll say to you that, that obviously, from the emergency management perspective, and, and what we uh, and our mission is to actually work with the counties and support the counties and provide them with the resources they need, as well as education and training. But I will tell you that we're all look at, looking at all types of hazards. Uh, you know, uh, frankly, again, uh, as Ray pointed out, you know, flash flooding is certainly an issue. Flooding in general is an issue in our, in our Commonwealth. Uh, we certainly have tornadoes. We have had some earthquakes. Uh, we've got blimps that come in. Uh, I don't know if you caught that little issue where a blimp uh, landed uh, in uh, uh, Bloomsburg area. But, uh, and, and frankly, we're actually really concerned about uh, the high path avian flu that's coming in for the, the poultry, uh, which Lancaster County in Pennsylvania uh, is the number one egg producing county in the country. And if, uh, if uh, avian flu struck that, uh, it'd be a very devastating situation. But the point I'm making is, is that our approach has always been from a ha all hazards perspective. So yeah, there were some different, different maps that showed up. This is Norfolk Southern, and, and the bottom line is, is that uh, we recognize in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, these types of trains go through 39 counties. There's 70, there's 67 counties in Pennsylvania. Uh, 39 of these, uh, uh, 39 counties have these trains go through, both in urban and in rural areas. And although there's challenges in urban areas, there's certainly just as many challenges in the rural areas, even though the populations are down. Um, and about 60 to, seven, 60 to 70 Balkan coup trains travel the Commonwealth every single day, just to, just to put things in perspective. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what the Commonwealth is doing again, and I will say to you that, that I am, uh, and, I, and I meet with a lot of the other state emergency management directors across the country, and uh, they're kind of jealous in a sense because uh, our, we have a governor that is totally engaged. Uh, he has been engaged prior to the inauguration. I worked at the Federal Emergency Management Agency in, in D.C. prior to coming to Pennsylvania, and I only gave them three days' notice because the governor wanted us to come up, uh, the, so many of the cabinet members to come up and go to the Emergency Management Agency and get a briefing on the previous director on what emergency management was, uh, simply based on the fact that he's got a lot of agendas uh, in relationship to, um, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, the fact that, that he has a, a lot of things that he wants to get accomplished, but he recognizes one event, one catastrophic event <clears throat> could wipe it totally out. And so he's very focused in on that. And as I said, uh, some of my uh, colleagues across the country uh, do not have that relationship. And so just to give you a, a heads up, uh, uh, two weeks after the inauguration, I got a call from the chief of staff and said, the governor wants a tabletop exercise. Okay, great, when? This was on a Monday. On Friday, okay, we'll do a tabletop exercise on Friday. Uh, typically, you have to take a little time to, to pull these together for those people involved with tabletop exercises. But I said, what do you want it on? Balkan crew. Okay. So on Friday, uh, we went ahead and put a scenario. We had the entire cabinet over at the State Emergency Management Agency, had a scenario that basically was a, uh, a Norfolk Southern train slammed into an Amtrak train in the city of Harrisburg at 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And, you know, and, and we really put it in a mindset of a very catastrophic event. And the whole purpose was to give the shock and awe, if you will, to the cabinet, brand new cabinet folks, to get them to understand their role and their, their, their positions and their agency's positions in, in being able to deal with this type of event. Additionally, uh, Governor uh, Wolf did send a letter to President Obama on February 27th, you know, basically asking specifically to have uh, the president uh, engage and, and in fact take, uh, uh, per, have the uh, uh, federal action to prevent oil, the oil train accidents from happening, let alone the response uh, side of the house. Um, I'll just quote, he said, I'm asking for the federal government's assistance to make sure that transportation of oil trains is safe. <coughs> I've already taken actions to address this issue, including holding emergency trainings, participating in meetings with the executives from the, uh, the rail industry, tasking my administration to put plans in place to both prevent accidents and mitigate impacts. And we also need expedited federal regulatory action in several areas. And so that was just an example of what the letter uh, that he provided to it. He also met with the leaders, as I mentioned, uh, and sent them a letter, uh, and Norfolk Southern and CSX are the, are the uh, two industries that, that travel through the Commonwealth that carry the Balkan crude. Uh, then he hired an expert to come in and do an assessment. 
Uh, Dr. Alan Zambreski was hired to conduct this assessment uh, on, uh, in May of uh, 2015. <clears throat> so he completed the report uh, in August. And I, and I have handouts in the back, and you can, you can get the, uh, the actual linkage to it. But it provides for 27 recommendations uh, that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can do to address this particular issue. Fundamentally, it talks about derailment risks, tank car breach, rupture, and a regulatory or, uh, oversight. I just wanted to focus in because it, it go, the, the theme here in this tabletop is what is it relationship to the emergency responders and what their role is. So Pima, my agency, received uh, four specific recommendations. Uh, certainly first work with the, the railroads and we have been working with railroads. I met with both leaders uh, uh, or executives uh, from both CSX and Norfolk. Our team has met, met with them. One of the questions in relationship and Ray pointed it out, having the first responders have knowledge of what is being carried. Well, we do have that working relationship with both CSX and Norfolk where we have and, and first responders at, at a fire chief or, or uh, a senior level uh, operations uh, individual can get uh, apps that can identify specifically what's traveling through, what's on the, car, the, the, the cars, and so that a moment's notice they understand what they're running into when they do respond. Recognizing there's always going to be some uncertainty, and again, and from a first responder community, we're always going to take that conservative approach initially until we find out what's going on. Um, we have information, and they talked about the fusion centers. In addition, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has a state fusion center, the region has a fusion center, and, and, and Philadelphia has a fusion center. The concept is that all hazards, not just cr criminal intelligence, but all hazards from health, uh, agriculture, uh, emergency management, uh, and, and, and those state agencies that participate in the all hazard fusion center. That information is then is, is sent to both the fusion center as well as to the state emergency operations center. And I personally actually get a call uh, from the, uh, the rail industry when something's going on. And um, so we get that information. Uh, so uh, we're working very closely with them and we're going to continue to address uh, again those, those issues and challenges associated with notifications. We also uh, are working on uh, a lot of training initiatives. Uh, the, we have funding uh, that, that addresses some of the training issues for uh, response operations, drills, exercises through what's called, and, and uh, I'll mention it, the Hazardous Materials Emergency Response Fund uh, that exists in the Commonwealth that provides for uh, money that provide, that's given to the local emergency management committee, planning committees to address uh, some of the training and operational uh, planning needs. Uh, we are beginning to uh, uh, see many of the, the areas uh, in the counties develop full-scale exercises in response to these, uh, 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 this type of event. Uh, the, uh, all communities along Sieba routes have appropriate emergency response plans. Now, again, from the, the planning perspective, uh, we address all hazards. Uh, it's an all-hazards plan. And then we get into specific plans in relationship to specific events that can occur. This is one of them. Uh, Pima uh, uh, works with the, the, the uh, again, local emergency planning committees. We also have developed uh, some uh, uh, planning tools where we actually have a, a planning tool that, uh, we, that each of those committees can actually take that tool online and develop a comprehensive plan. It's not just the, t the plan itself, it's the process of bringing folks together to work on the plan. We conducted a Praetorium by Rail Summit uh, on uh, June 24th of this year, and uh, it was for all county and task forces. Again, we talked about the, our task forces. Uh, that's how our Homeland Security Grant Fund is distributed. But we provide that. We actually include the Federal Rail Administration, CSX, Norfolk Southern, uh, the Fire Commissioner's Office, and, uh, and, and many other industry experts to bring those first responders and emergency management community together to address some of the issues and talk about planning efforts relating to these kind of events. Uh, again, uh, when we talk about an inventory uh, of emergency response capabilities, uh, we have initiated a study using GIS, and, and again, both uh, Al and Ray mentioned it, uh, where software to identify population centers, identify critical infrastructure that's in those population centers, and again, those areas that are, if you will, high target areas for those emergency responders that have those trains that come through. Uh, we, can, we can provide the training to anybody, but obviously if we do it up in the north and there's no trains come through, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're identifying those target areas and focusing the training, and, and the fire commissioner will talk a little bit more about the specifics of that training. So going forward, 
Uh, we're going to continue to collaborate with the uh, first responder community, the emergency management community, the, the rail industry itself. Um, uh, we're going to continue to have training occur. As I mentioned, the, the commissioner is going to talk about that. We'll continue to do planning and both strategical and tactical. Uh, what happens in a particular community and work with those counties to, to support their plans. Uh, we will con uh, they will con conduct full-scale exercises. We're going to go back to the cabinet uh, within the next uh, year, or early springtime, and do another tabletop exercise on this issue. They had it the first day, week they were there. Now, as, as uh, state agencies are heavily engaged in this process, including the Department of Environmental Protection, and the Public Utility Commissions, as well as the other state agencies. Uh, we're working very closely with them, and we'll have a, 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 another tabletop exercise. Identify the gaps. You know, again, we've talked about response capabilities. <coughs> we're talking about not only training gaps, plan gaps, but those response capabilities such as foam. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's an awful lot of foam that's required to put out those things. And many times you'll see that, they, that you don't put it out. The best approach is to let it burn. And again, those are, those, are, those are things that you need to work with the industry experts as well as the, the emergency service community to find what gaps do exist and, and ensure there's enough resources to take care of it. Um, and in essence, that's, that's pretty much it uh, from my perspective. I'm going to turn it over to the State Fire Commissioner at this point, uh, Tim Solibay, to be able to go ahead and uh, provide his presentation on the training side of the house.